Yeah, definitely. So um, we've obviously discussed uh, how you develop your characters. And I think the idea of writing a short story is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to borrow that. Um, <laughs> but when you come to develop a character, say it's you're going to be a serious mm -hmm. character, what do you think is the most important thing to, to remember to, when you're creating a serious character? Well, as I say, I think when you start out, it's quite a good plan to leave those gaps in the in the character's backstory. So there are things that the more you write about a character, the more you get to understand how they tick, and and it things start to make sense that may simply not have occurred to you previously. Uh, or, or think things may just pop up out of the blue. Uh, I think this has happened uh, to some extent in the Lake District books with the uh, relationship between Hannah and Daniel. Uh, that relationship takes a fresh turn in, in The Crooked Shore, the, the new book. And again, uh, I've, I've never really planned that relationship. I've never known exactly how it would work out uh, because this idea of my being uncertain as I, I write gives me an interest in seeing how the characters naturally evolve. I think if you uh, put some thought into the characters, you try to soak yourself into their mentality, then you start to understand things about them and that comes from writing about them. So things will emerge out of out of the ether, so to speak, uh, that that weren't weren't there in your conscious mind initially. It might have been there in the subconscious occasionally, uh, but but often it, it's more a matter of continuing to write and continuing to explore, and and eventually you find out things that fit in with the stories but also fit in with the characters so that you're not doing things with the characters that go against the grain. Yeah. I mean, a classic example, I suppose, is, uh, is in uh, uh, Charles Dickens, where he creates this wonderful character in Mr. Micawber. And then all of a sudden, right at the end, Mr. Micawber goes off and becomes a magistrate in Australia or something like that. It's, <laughs> yeah, that really isn't... <laughs> Uh, yeah, one of the great writers of all time, and a writer I, I absolutely love, but yeah, that, that just doesn't <laughs> really, to me, work. Uh, uh, I think it was just something he, he did, dashed off on the spur of the moment, that particular uh, resolution for that character. So, so I, I like to have things that kind of make sense within the context of, of the character, because pe people do act out of character, of course, all the time. But in, in a larger sense, those actions tend to be something one can imagine. It, it's when your imagination really rebels that you've got a problem, I think, with characterization. So it's got to be something that makes sense in the, in the context of that particular character. As long as it, it does make sense in that way, I don't think it particularly matters if, if what is done with the character is pretty unexpected, yeah. uh, but that, that's fine. Uh, it's often very positive, but, but it must make sense, I think, given the, what we know of the character. Yeah, okay, that's lovely, thank you. Uh, right, now you were talking about um, formula and sticking to formula and I don't know whether it's because I watch so many um, TV detective shows now um, but it really does feel as though every detective has got to have some sort of underlying flaw um, and, and that they can't get on with their boss um, yeah. Yeah. and I don't know whether that's just me being a little bit uh, <laughs> having watched far too many of these now. Um, do we need to steer clear of formula like that, do you think? Well, I think that the, the key thing is that whatever one does uh, as a writer, and, and true originality is awfully difficult, 
um, yeah. or forgive. Um, I think one wants to try to do it in a, a reasonably fresh way. It's, it's the way you tell them, the old stand up <laughs> comics used to say. So that that's the key. It's the voice or whatever it is. But the I, I, I do agree that the simple stereotype of the uh, uh, cop being taken off the case by a, uh, a, a boss that doesn't understand what, what the cop's trying to do is we, we've come across it many times. It doesn't mean to say it can't be done, but I think if 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 you do do it, it's it's good to give it a fresh angle. And and it, I think it's desirable if that. Uh, although you know, heaven knows there are no rules about these things. But I, I think it's desirable if that that angle um, makes sense in terms of the nature of the story that you're writing. So for instance, in the Lake District books, uh, Hannah is a police officer um, and she's a senior police officer running the cold case squad. But the she, she doesn't get taken off the case uh, uh, routinely in, in these novels. What she does is she she will have issues to deal with how many people she's allowed on the team and that kind of thing. The office politics, that's, uh, uh, I think that's something that's, that's interesting and something we can relate to, even if we know nothing about police forces, because that's, that's human nature and that's common to all working environments. And it's that that interests me in the Lake District series, much more than the uh, technicalities of police procedure or forensics, which many great writers have tackled very, very extensively and very, very effectively. And I don't think that for me personally as a writer, given that I'm not enormously interested in police procedure, not enormously interested in forensic detail, it doesn't make sense for me to major on those issues. I deal with them I, I hope carefully uh, and, and reasonably accurately in the context of the stories where they're relevant. But for me, it's more about the human interactions between the uh, individuals in the in the cold case team. That's really what what matters, uh, and, and that that's the the interest uh, because because it's it's about people. And yeah. we're fascinated in, in the way that other people behave. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we have reached the point where I'm going to have to ask you for your top tips for our aspiring writers who um, have already written something and are desperate to get it published and or maybe working on their first book. Um, so have you got any top tips? Well, I, I think that um, there are, quite apart from how I've done it, there are, there are many good books about the, uh, the technicalities of, of crime writing. And there are many, many different ways of, of writing a crime story, as well as many, many different types of crime stories. That, that there aren't, to my mind, any great rules. But I think that what is interesting is the... Uh, is as understanding of the the life of of a writer uh, that's always fascinated me and still does and and it, it's a bit of a roller coaster uh, and there are ups and there are downs and I think that if you're very committed to being a writer and this is true of any form of writing I think certainly true of crime writing then I think that what you have to cultivate as far as you possibly can do is is a kind of dogged persistence and and a determination to keep at it and not to be uh, totally demoralized when things don't go well because the one uh, uh guarantee is that things will not always go well uh, and uh it, it's a great shame if that if that knocks you off course i think it's really important to uh, by all means allow yourself, as, as I do, 24 hours to rant and rave at an editor's uh, uh, misperceptions and so on. But, but after that, you don't want to get too self-indulgent about it. 
you need to uh, look at it again if, if the editor has pointed something out. And if the publisher has dropped you, this is something that's happened to me, it's happened to many writers, including many bestsellers, then, then you don't want to be permanently demoralised. It's perfectly fine to be upset and uh, cross about it because uh, it's truly infuriating. But, but the bigger picture is if you really want to write, um, you can always you can always improve what you write and you can always write something better. And I think this idea of constantly striving to improve is really important for a writer. I think the day you you sit back and think, oh, I've, I've cracked it. Uh, yeah, that, that's the moment you really ought to worry. Uh, so I, th I think keeping at it and keeping the faith, keeping your enthusiasm and your energy levels it's it's it, it's not easy to do and i don't pretend that it is it's easy to for me to say it. it's harder to practice it but but i do believe in it very very passionately that it's this uh uh sticking with what you believe and it, it's certainly fair to say that um my career i've had plenty of downs as as well as ups but I've always believed in myself as a writer. Uh, and, and I think that trying to maintain that self-belief is, is a good thing for any writer, whatever anybody else says, a publisher or a reviewer, whatever it may be. Uh, you, you've got to try to maintain that self-belief and keep writing. And if you have a, a setback, well, maybe if you keep at it before long, you'll have something lucky happen to you it's not guaranteed but um you know if you want to win the lottery you've got to buy a ticket and so on and if you want to succeed with your writing you've got to write and you've got to continue to write even when things are are not uh, uh entirely in your favor so um uh, i i think that that would be my top tip just uh, uh believe in yourself is okay. is the key to it because it's really not as easy as as it is to read a book, is it, to, to actually create one of those masterpieces no. that you create? No, it, it isn't. And, and I've, I've, I've been reviewing for over 30 years. And I think that, again, reviewers, I, I think the key with reviewing is that it's important for a reviewer to ask, ask yourself, what is the writer trying to achieve? It's pointless to criticise a writer for not writing the book that you would have written. <laughs> it, yeah, the question is, what have they tried to achieve and to what extent have they succeeded? Um, I think that bit of empathy is, is crucial with, uh, with literary criticism. Uh, and that's something I have tried to practice as well as preach. Um, but ultimately, as a writer, you've got no control of what people think about your writing you've only got control over what you do and what you write and this is why as i say it's that self self-belief uh that uh, that is absolutely fundamental right okay well on that point i will uh, say thank you very much for joining us on mugshots and uh and i look forward to seeing that third book out as well <laughs> in rachel <laughs> <Thanks so much laughs> <indeed. laughs> thank you it's been great